Hello, welcome back to Let's Build the 200 Subscriber Special. Today we will be doing uh, Chinese aircraft loadouts. Excuse me, kind of uh, like what we did yesterday, well not yesterday, last week with the, um, with the American aircraft loadout. So we're just going to uh, kind of just go through the airfields clockwise and uh, manage the aircraft. But you have aircraft, don't you? I can see on the map you have aircraft. Uh. Oh. Oh, there's two units for some reason. That's weird. Uh. Can I delete you? Yeah, you're redundant, so. There we go. So. Let us start with. Okay, these are the JH7. So these are going to be kind of, uh. Uh, what you may call it, um, sacrificial aircraft. We can see their loadouts aren't great. Uh, general purpose bombs, rockets. They can be used for long range intercept. They have uh, anti runway bombs, mines, land attack cruise missile. Well, they do have the capability for some. YJ-83, so that's probably what they would do. The C-802 uh, derivative, right? Yeah. So that's actually more modern than I thought. So we're going to... Ready one squad with cruise missiles. The other one... We're going to ready. I saw they have um, these AS-17 Krypton anti-radiation missiles. So this would be a useful uh, saturation um, attack because it'll just go after radars. And it should be supersonic too. Uh, yeah, 2,000 knots. So that will make interception more difficult. So there we go, there's Woody Island. Uh, let's see here. So then I guess next we have some airfields on this island. Uh, we got J-10s, which will probably keep two squadrons in the air superiority role. Um, so let's do that, and then we'll have one squadron in the, um, anti-ship roll. What is this? Oh, laser-guided bomb. All right. Okay, so this is what we want. Uh, we have another airfield here. 56. We got more flounders. Which will probably just run exclusively in... The uh, anti-shipping roll here. What's the difference? Oh, they just range basically uh what is the range sure in miles that's probably close enough oh that's at the extreme limit of the range i think so actually it would be enough for these guys but here i'm going to say actually uh let's see or nautical miles well we can extend that further at a cost of um time on station these guys were actually going to switch to well this is the only one they have
Uh, 100, oh, 550 nautical mile strike radius. So that's fine for the J10s. But again, for these guys, they're kind of just eyeballing it. They're kind of at the limit of their range. So we are going to take this, which has a much larger strike radius. So that should be make them work a bit better uh we have z9s i forget what uh here search and rescue apparently that's what they're for then these i think are heavy asw uh maritime surveillance no a244 i think that's their asw loadout And then we got some more J-10s, which again, two squads are going to be um, EL-15 is that, um, ooh, okay, so actually we're going to have two squads as EL-12s. PL-10, I assume, is just a, like a sparrowed clone. Oh, short range, not even. Ah, uh, oh, what a pointless loadout. <laughs> uh, these guys will go with standard. Well, actually, it's the same... The same time on station at the same distance. So, yeah, they'll go heavy. But then these guys are going to arm themselves as PL-15s. And their goal will be to try to knock out the uh, AWACS to kind of blind the battle group. Alright. Uh, let me just make sure I didn't miss any aircraft here. Nope. Alright. So then we got this air. One of these is a real airfield. There we go. Uh, more J-10s. Actually, this probably should have been the... Uh... Let's make you the... Uh... The PL-15 squadron. Uh... And then if we go back to here. I made these guys all PL-15s. So actually, I'm going to set you to PL-12s. And then likewise, these guys, we're going to set... Oh, did I? Yeah, okay, I think everything's right now. I think. Eight aircraft, zero aircraft. All right. Uh, all right. Who else do we have? Are we using anyone at this airfield? We are using people at this airfield. Not our squad of J8s. Which these guys will... I think the PL-15s will also just kind of be there to saturate the carriers, uh, airborne defenders, and not just... Ex oh, oh. Not just exclusively going for, you know, the tankers and stuff, but obviously those, uh, if detected, would be priority targets. Um, what's the range on the PL-15 anyways? Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, 100 miles. So they'd have to get pretty close to the group. It is possible. They could do it. Uh, we'll see how that stacks up against the AIM 260s that we're going to be uh, throwing at them. All right, so it looks like we're not using this air. Oh, no, we have. We're using something here. Here we go. We are not using you. I don't think I need you. All right. 
All right, these are some of our... All right, so flying sharks, these are flanker derivatives. Um, we'll give them a nice mixed loadout. And then their roaring sharks, which are their growler der derivatives, are... Uh, actually, let's see what the difference is. Yeah, they're just going to go all in. Uh, the range might be a little on the... Well, that's the thing. I gotta, I gotta worry about their range at this point. Uh, five hundred nautical mile strike radius. Okay, so that should be sufficient to get them in range. Okay, let's see what else we've got going on here. That's redundant. We've got seven aircraft here. It looks like. We've got Sono Buoy Search only, so these are ASW aircraft. Uh, actually, what's the difference? Nothing. So may as well have them for search only. And then we got some Midas, which I believe are going to be tankers. Yep. And then we've got... This grouping here. J11s. They're probably all going to be um, air superiority just to. Um, let's see, does this give us. This will get them a bit more range, so we'll probably do that, but they're basically just going to be. Yeah, they'll need that range. Uh, but they're basically just going to be escorting the heavy bomber uh, formations. I gotta say, this looks a lot less promising for the uh, American force as I'm going through these. Okay, so we have helicopters, which are going to be... These are a lot further inland than I would have thought. Um... Now let's, um, here, long endurance, that's probably what they want. Then we have some J-11s, which again are going to be kind of that long range, um, escort. Yeah, because it's like, it's almost 200 miles just to where... Just to this line here. So that'll give them a bit more endurance. Alright, let's see. Where else? Okay, we aren't using aircraft. I, I guess I could keep that as like secondary airfields for stuff to return to. But we aren't using... We aren't really using the stuff here. Yeah, we don't need these single unit airfields because they are redundant. So that's an easy, you know, 10 or so we could clean up. Uh, let's see. We do have aircraft here. Ooh, FC-31. So these are NJ-20. So I believe this is their entire stealth grouping, if I'm not mistaken. So the FCs... What can we arm them with? J-31s. We can arm... Probably just arm them all as fighters, right? I mean, the bombers... We've already got plenty of missile carriers. And these guys aren't... They carry a significant... Let's see, this gives them... Two hundred minutes, two hundred fifty nautical miles, and they will. Yeah, so they're going to be external max intercept, which will give them drop tanks. So they're probably going to have to be 
setup is that, and then these interceptors, or these heavy stealth fighters, rather. Will again be external. Uh, let's see, do they have PL21? What's that? Gotta wait for the database viewer to load. Ooh. Dual band seeker. Okay, so they are definitely going to be using. This the uh tour nautical miles station. I don't. Oh, they're all at tour nautical miles station, so that's just what they have to work with. They might not have the range. I might actually have to move them because they might like. Well, again, we can trade time on station for, and we do have tankers, so. Uh, some of this might be resolved, but obviously some of these are perhaps not in their ideal. Um, like, ideally, you'd have these all in a couple of bases, but you also don't want them susceptible to a first strike, which we're going to just assume the Chinese are paranoid might happen. Uh, so let's see. Can I... I would... Where is... Browse scenario platforms, aircraft. Oh, that just. I was hoping it would tell me like loadouts and stuff. So I could see how many I've actually done. Um, order a battle? That might give it to me. Take a little while to load though, because I think in theory. Um. I would just have the naval base ships. Okay, yeah, so this does give me loadouts. So when I'm done, I can just scroll through there, make sure everyone's got an assigned loadout. This next should be this base, which has six aircraft. We have a UAV, which will obviously just be recon. We got these guys, which are going to be offensive ECM. Airborne early warning. And then this guy is going to be Eland. All right. And then even further to the north, if I remember correctly. Do we have anything here? Uh, I don't think we have any aircraft, so we could probably delete that base. Yeah, I don't think this base... Uh, yeah, because I don't see any uh, symbols saying there's aircraft stored there, so that'll improve scenario performance a little bit. This base does have aircraft, though. I believe this is where the bulk of our bomber force is based. So we got these guys, which I think are going to be our, yep, our ballistic missile carrier, anti-ship ballistic missile conventional. Ready immediately. And then these guys are going to be cruise missile carriers. Uh, air launch cruise missile. By J63. What do we got here? A bit heavier, apparently, since they got a slightly shorter. It can be used for anti surf. I thought I had yeah, C601. Electro Optical Seeker. What else we got? What's this? Is this only for land attack, or is this also capable of... Okay, that's anti-land only. And then YJ-12, I think, is what everyone else is pretty much using. Um, which is the C-802? Air launch, long-range, 
high supersonic ram dip onto the. Whoa. All right, yeah, so they would probably take this. I think the YJ-12 would be their most capable weapon then as a supersonic anti-ship missile. So I think that about does it. And don't forget, it's been a while, but we've got these uh, missile batteries here uh, that have oh, how many? Maybe another 12 ballistic missiles there, so it'll be 16. We're looking at 16 ballistic missiles and probably something along the lines of between 200 and 400 anti-ship cruise missiles. So it's going to be a tall... There will be ships sunk, I'm pretty sure. Alright, so now... These guys shouldn't be too bad because they just have the one helicopter, which is going to be... Mark 46. Like, the American Mark 46 torpedo? I suppose this must have been... Uh... No, it's a different one. Okay. Although I do see it's carried by some Canadians, but... Uh, here, what do we got here? Are these depth charges or? Oh, these are, oh, anti-ship cruise missiles. Eight nautical mile, uh, blah, 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 eight nautical mile range. So very short range, but then I think this is a torpedo. So this might be what we do is give them the. Oh, that is torpedo. U-11, though, is actually either own native torpedo, though, or it's the A-244, I think, is imported. Yeah, so we'll probably give them U-11. And then we'll give these guys uh, the U-11 as well. And then we've got all these guys to do. So we'll start with... Um, obviously, for all the destroyers, we're just going to give them the same anti-submarine warfare loadout here. Which shouldn't be too bad and should be pretty reasonable. Honestly, I don't know. I almost feel like, like the... The Chinese submarines, I think, might play a role, but I think the American submarine role is going to be limited. And I might actually um, change the comm settings to enable them to actually be manually commanded. Uh, just because I would assume that if they suddenly start hearing the carrier... Because, I mean, they have sonars, right? Passive, active. They'd be able to hear all the ships firing missile after missile after missile as aircraft after aircraft wars off the carrier deck. And they'd be like, huh, maybe something's up and we should check in. So, I think I will give them manual commands. And that should enable at least an early retaliation strike um, from... The um, American subs. But of course, obviously, by the time the Chinese are launching and the Americans detect it, um, it's. They aren't going to stop any missiles from being launched. Let's put it that way. But uh, I guess that depends, right? Like, if the Chinese try to. Uh, okay, let's have one. I don't know what the difference is, so we're going to split the difference. One is going to be uh, the U-7, and one will be the U-11. I assume the U-11 is probably newer, but I obviously have no real knowledge of that. Yeah, the U-7 looks pretty old. I will see 1994, whereas the U-11 is uh uh 2019 you know what let's just give them 
Yeah, we'll just say they're using their newest stuff. And now, finally, we have the Chinese aircraft carrier, which, uh... Oh, how do I want to split this up? Probably use... Now this is the case where I would say probably hundred fifty minutes. Oh that's with a light load out. What's our range? Okay, they are within range, so we can go heavy. Probably have these guys go. Because I know they've got problems getting a heavy load on, off of this carrier. And we'll just assume that these uh, fighters have better stealth. Um, or not better stealth, better engines that can enable them to get heavier loads. But to that point... This is probably more realistic, uh, minus the, the drop tanks. And we're going to say those are going to be the guys that are going to try to run in and hit them. We got our Super Frelins here. Acting in AEW capacity, we have our Roaring Sharks, which will be acting purely in the offensive. These guys are actually... Okay, they have 500 nautical mile strike rate, so they can take the, the full weapon load there. These guys can be search and rescue. And then we do have one more squad of... J f or one squad of J-15S, which is, I think, their newer version. Uh, we'll give them YJ-83s. That's uh, a mixed loadout. Alright, so with that, I think I've given all the Chinese aircraft a loadout. Uh, let's go to order of battle here to make sure. Uh, unit by type. Facility, ship, bomber. Okay, so we have... That's yeah, way too slow. It's looking like everyone's got their loadout. Oh, it even sorts them by class. Dude, that's kinda that's kinda neat. Or like roll. Uh nope, they got the U eleven. So yeah, everyone's got their loadout. Um, oh, this is going to be a scary scenario as the Americans, but it might be a little easier for them. And that's going to be very dependent on a couple of basically how I decide to execute the attack. Um, because if the, if they attack all at once and don't like, Uh, yeah, if they if they try to have their fighters clear the airspace before their bombers go in, they'll lose the element of surprise, and that can enable the U.S. to counter attack some of their platforms before they can launch a strike. So what they're going to probably do 
is go all in. Although, whether the U.S. Navy will wait for them to fire the first shot once it becomes apparent that they're attacking, um, I don't know. It might be I just have them set to open fire as soon as, um, basically as soon as, like, the electronic warfare starts going on. But that'll be, uh, that'll be something to figure out in the future. But until then, thank you all for watching and stay tuned for next time and stay safe out there. And we'll see you then.